Hi guys, my name is Tom Hicks and today I'm going to be telling you guys why I use the iPhone and specifically the iPhone 10 model phone to record all my vlogs. So going down a list of reasons as to why I use my iPhone 10 to record all my vlogs, it can go from anything such as the Apple ecosystem, to how easy the phone is, to all the features it has packed inside it. So like most vloggers out there, you have your own independent camera. I also have my own independent camera, which is the Canon, which is actually being used right now to film the footage you're seeing of the iPhone 10. However, if you're just starting out like me, you don't really want to be ragging around multiple cameras, boom mics and other accessories to try and make your vlogs look like something out of a Hollywood uh, production made by one of the biggest producers going. I personally prefer to use my iPhone 10 because like I said before, it is small and mighty. It has a lot to, to kind of cram inside one shell. Uh, it's easy to carry in your pocket so you don't need much room at all to carry around a camera that can even have great specs inside it as well. It's absolutely easy to set up, all you need to do is launch the camera app, you've got your multiple settings uh, inside the settings mode of an iPhone so you can record it in different um, aspects such as your 1080p, uh, your 720p, you can even do uh, 4K and all those have different frames per second as well so you also have your slow-mo footage but we're just going to stick to the main kind of recording aspects if you're going to do your standard vlog. So the footage you're looking at now is the rear facing camera at 1080p at 30 frames per second. You can decide to do other frames per second in other camera modes such as 24 frames per second which is your standard one for film, uh, 30 frames per second and 60 frames per second as well. So like I said if you're trying to take a picture of something that's quite far away in the distance you do have your 10 times digital zoom that's if you're trying to take a still image. Uh, I believe if you're trying to do a video as well then you can get up to six times digital zoom so that way your video uh, resolution and the frames uh, and the pixel count isn't compromised in the process. Unlike cameras, you're going to have to need covers and you're going to have to put those on the lenders and take them off every time you want to record or travel. However, the iPhone 10, since it's a more mobile subject, you do have your cameras built in there, but you do have a sapphire lens cover. This means there's going to be minimal damage between the camera and the lens itself. So even if your sapphire lens does get a little bit scratched, the image quality is still going to be really good. Also, you're not going to have to waste time fumbling around in a backpack trying to take off multiple packets off of a Canon lens just to make sure it doesn't get scratched. The autofocus that also comes within the video and picture mode is an absolutely stunning feature. It works pretty uh, pretty well compared to other model phones I've used before. I've used the Samsung S8. The focus on there I found to be mediocre. The OnePlus was pretty quick, I must admit. Um, I did try that on the OnePlus 3T and the OnePlus 5. The focus I find works a lot better on the rear facing camera, the front facing camera does have its perks, however sometimes I do find the focus can be a little bit hit and miss. But either way you can produce really good content whether it's a front facing selfie, uh, a front facing video or a rear facing picture or rear facing video. Now depending on resolution you have your camera set up, since I do have mine at 1080p at 30 frames per second, you will get a really good amount of video stabilization. So if you're walking along a garden path and there's a little bit of tremor as you're trying to hold, for example, a tripod, uh, you will notice that in the video it is pretty smoothed out. So you wouldn't have your generic video wobble as you would in a lot of uh, smartphones, especially older ones also. Um, you'll find the iPhone 10 does have a pretty reasonable amount of video stabilization without making it look like it's something that's been altered too much. Now one of my favorite features on this phone is the 4K ability. Now to have 4K recording on a smartphone isn't necessarily new, but again, it's, it's a leap in the right direction. It's, it's just a leap in what you can do in a smartphone whilst it's in your pocket. So as you know, you can get 4K resolution at 24 frames per second, 30 or 60. Now again, if you're putting the frames per second higher, you are kind of getting rid of a little bit of your pixel count on your screen. It's going to look a little bit more blurry. That's why I record in 30 frames rather than 60 frames because although it looks smoother at 60 frames, I like to have more pixels. I like it to be a little bit more crisp and a little bit more sharper rather than having a smoother video. Let's talk about the solid reason, the complete 100% reason as to why I use my iPhone X rather than my Canon camera. That one reason is AirDrop. Now, when I found out about AirDrop, I was kind of blown away because I thought, hang on a moment, this is like a superior enhanced version of Bluetooth that doesn't really take long at all to, to transfer big files. A gig of uh, files could take me probably the same amount of time it would take to drag and drop it. It's that quick uh, to, to AirDrop things over. Um, whether it be to Apple products uh, such as your MacBook or your iPad or another existing iPhone in the house. It is a, a wonderful tool where you can, you know, 
basically drag and drop files without having to drag and drop and plug in things here and there and get USB dongles and get adapters. I guess the plus side to this is I can use everything all in one little ecosystem. So because I've got the iPhone 10, I can record really good image quality. I have the MacBook Pro, so that means I'm able to edit, produce and airdrop all of my files over within the same ecosystem. So although some people don't like the Apple ecosystem and say they don't like it because you're going to need dongles to do this and drag and drop this to that, if you actually understand how Apple products work, you kind of figure out that you don't need all these dongles, you don't need to go out and spend hundreds of pounds just to get a handful of dongles to then you know, drag and drop files over and put video files here and use them there. Uh, the only thing I do have in terms of dongle is I have the USB Type-C to USB 2.0, uh, which is your standard USB, of course. Those are for things such as charging my phone or charging my Apple Watch or anything like that whilst I'm on the go. I do have one for my Canon, which I actually got on a sale at a place that's closing down near me. Uh, I got this for eight pounds, which is simply plugging this into my MacBook and then getting the footage from my Canon uh, SD card into the SD card reader and onto my MacBook. But back to the iPhone 10, when I'm using AirDrop, I find it seamless to drag and drop things over to a MacBook without the use of actually physically putting things together. And that is my one reason as to why I will always and will use my iPhone 10 until another method comes along that's quite similar. So the overall pros of this is that in your pocket, you're going to have a shed load of opportunities. You're going to have a shed load of skills and you're gonna have unlimited amounts of fun with one phone in your pocket. So you have the multiple formats, you've got the resolutions, you've got the frames per second, you've got the airdrops, so you're, you're, you're very mobile as to what you can do without having to you know, move things here and there and plug this in and wait for drivers to install and so on. It's less hassle overall, less equipment needing to be carried around, and for a starter vlog like myself, if you've got the budget, I would say go for it. It doesn't necessarily need to be the iPhone 10. it could be an iPhone 7, it could be an iPhone 8. If you wanted to go down to the iPhone 6s, then you can, you can well do so. It doesn't even need to be an iPhone. Um, however, if you don't have an iPhone, then you won't be able to use the airdrop ability. But if you're wanting to use the uh, airdrop ability, then I would definitely and strongly recommend using Apple products. I've just realized that sounds like I'm trying to sell Apple to you, like a, like a paid content video. I can assure you now, Apple wouldn't even know who I am. If I walked into a store and said, yo, my name's Tom Hicks, would you uh, give me a free iPad to review? They would probably get security to chuck me out. So this isn't a paid or endorsed video by them. I'm not receiving any kind of uh, popularity or money or exchange for anything from Apple. So this is just off my own accord. I thought I'd kind of share with you guys how I make my videos and so on. You know, I didn't want to leave you guys in the dark thinking, how's he do this? How's, it, how's that working? Uh, there's a lot of opportunity with Apple and I, and I absolutely enjoy the fact that Apple do take these things seriously. There are people that prefer their Androids. There are people that prefer Windows. I right now strongly prefer um, Apple, Mac OS and iOS. I, I prefer all those because they work so fluently together. They work so happily together and they complement each other in every single way you can imagine using for video editing, for photo manipulation, to transferring files, uh, anything like that. Anything that's, I would say, a lot more technical, uh, Apple have a really good strong point on. So if you have the budget, I would definitely go for it. So thank you very much for watching this video. I hope these kind of, I wouldn't say tips and tricks, but a little explanation as to why I do this with a certain setup has helped you in any way. If it has inspired you, then please go ahead and uh, do your own thing. Show me what you can do. Link me anything, comment me anything. Go from there. If you want to keep in touch with me on the social media outlets, they will be in the description below. Um, I'll have my Twitter, my Instagram, my Snapchat it hasn't been made yet, and it hasn't been made yet for quite a while, but that's something I'm looking to do today. Uh, I'm looking to do a lot today actually, but don't want to ramble on about that because there's no need to. So again, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.